So we're going to talk about multiplying and dividing radicals, but first let's look again at simplifying. When we look at our radical and what's under it, for example, we have the square root of 25x squared. We know we're looking for a square root. What is it that is squared in this number? We know that if we break down 25, it's the same as 5 times 5, and x squared is x times x. So if we're looking for pairs, well, this is 5 squared and x squared. So we know that this is going to be 5x because both of those are things that are squared. It's the same as 5 squared times x squared, or the square root of 5 squared times the square root of x squared. Here, let's look at the square root of 2 times the square root of 18. Now, I can simplify these individually, but if I multiply these together, I have the square root of 36. And I know from my list that this is 6. So I can just replace this. I could have multiplied them separately and evaluated them separately, but it made sense to put them together. Take a look at this one. We have the square root of 3 times the square root of 27x. Again, it makes sense to put them together because 3 times 27 is 81. Well, I know 81 is 9 squared, so if I take the square root of that, it's 9. So the 9 can come out, but the x does not have a partner, so it has to stay in. Well, let's look at this one. We have 2 times the square root of 27. Again, 27 is... 3 times 9, and 9 is on my list. So I can take the square root of 9, and it becomes 2 times the 3 that comes out, and then there's a 3 left inside, and 2 times 3 is 6. So up there it says 2 times the square root of 27. Now I have 3x times the square root of 49x times the square root of 5x. 49 is on my list. So that is 7 squared, so a 7 can come out. So it's 3x times 7 times the square root of x times the square root of 5x. All of this is multiplication. So I can simplify these and multiply them together, and I get 21x times the square root of 5x squared, because now I multiply those together since they're under the radical. 5 doesn't have a square root, but x squared, I can bring an x out for that and multiply it by the x that's already there. So let's look at the rules for this. Basically it says if I have two things I can multiply them together or if I have two things being multiplied I can separate them. Same for division. I can separate them or combine them. Depends on what I need. Is it better to have them separated or better to have them combined? Most work either way. Here I have the square root of 125 divided by the square root of 5. I can evaluate this separately. The square root of 125 is 5 square roots of 5, and then those cancel out and leave me with 5. Or I can combine them and say 125 divided by 5 is 25, and then just go straight to 5 from there. Which way is going to work better with the problem that you're working on? There's another rule you need to keep in mind, and that's that there aren't any radicals allowed in denominators. So if I have the square root of 14 divided by 28, I can simplify that and say that it's the square root of 1 over 2. Split it up now to simplify. Square root of 1 over the square root of 2. The square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 2 stays the same. Ooh, here we have the square root in the denominator. This is what we're not allowed to have. It's an appearance thing, really. We don't want irrational numbers in the denominator. So how do we get rid of it? Well, the same thing you do to any fraction that you want to change what it looks like multiply by 1 because it doesn't change the number. If I multiply by 1, I get what I started with. Look at this. I multiply by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2 and I get 1 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 2. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4. The square root of 2 I can't do anything with, but the square root of 4 is 2. Guys, these are the same thing. Okay? 1 over the square root of 2 is the same thing as the square root of 2 over 2. It's just a different way of writing it to get that radical out of the denominator. If you don't believe me, take a look at this. If I go to my online scientific calculator, I type in 1 divided by the square root of 2. I check up at the top, and that looks like what I want it to look like, so I'm going to press equals. I get 0 0.707.
let's see if it's the same thing when it's 2 divided by the square root of 2. Or, excuse me, square root of 2. So square root of 2 divided by 2. I'm going to check up at the top. Ooh, see, that's not what I want. So now I need to change it. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to just hit my backspace and delete that divided by 2. I'm going to close those parentheses. And then I'm going to do divided by 2. Check up at the top. It's the square root of 2 over 2. That's what I want. When I press equals, I get the same thing, 0 0.707. So rationalizing the denominator just changes the appearance.